Should you skip image pairs when creating your Midjourney personalization profile? This is one of the most common questions I see on this topic and a source of confusion. Personalization profiles essentially let you create your own custom Midjourney model that learns your aesthetic preferences as you rank pairs of images. The advice from the Midjourney team has always been to pick the image that you like best, don't overthink it, and trust the math. And if you sincerely and strongly dislike both images, you can click skip. So today we are putting this to the test with a little experiment. I created two distinct personalization profiles to test different ranking approaches by using the standard profile button on the personalization page. For the first profile, I ranked every image pair, no skipping. For the second profile, I was very selective, only choosing images I genuinely liked both the content and aesthetics of. To track how these profiles evolved, I saved snapshots of each personalization profile after ranking 40, 75, and up to 200 image pairs. To get each snapshot, I clicked copy code, ran a prompt, and then saved this alphanumeric code. This code changes each time you rank more image pairs, so we can use that to show how the profile develops with additional rankings. Okay, let's start with the selective profile. I'm not gonna lie, it took me many hours to get to 200 ranked image pairs. I was extremely selective, maybe picking one image out of every 50 to 75 or so image pairs. I saved these five personalization codes to represent the different stages in the ranking process. Then I ran a simple prompt, first without any personalization, and then with each of the five personalization codes. I used the same seed number across prompts. This lets us isolate how the personalization code affects the results. I'll leave some resources on the seed parameter down below. After just 40 rankings, there's already a significant shift in the style, brightness, and colors of the results. At 75 rankings, things become a little more refined. As I rank more, you can see the style continuing to change, but the difference between 40 and 200 rankings isn't as dramatic as it is from none to 40. Here's another prompt, this time a photographic style. Here we see brighter results after 40 rankings. At 75, we start seeing more muted blacks, the color palette changes a bit, and we have more of a contrast between the background and the person. As we get closer to 200 rankings, the blacks are lifted a bit more, there's more orange and more emphasis on shadow. Now, these are just the results for this prompt using this seed number, so we can't really extrapolate these results out to everything, but I did run these profile codes on a diverse set of prompts. On the right here, I used the profile code from 150 rankings. On the left, I ran the exact same set of prompts, but without personalization. In other words, the default Midjourney style. The default style is a bit grungier in these examples, and with the personalization profile on the right, you can see how it has that different color palette with more muted and darker tones. So overall, I think this selective personalization profile turned out okay, even if it took forever to complete rankings. And so the real question is, is it worth it to be super selective or should you just rank everything? So next I tried the no skip approach where I ranked every image pair that I was presented with. It definitely felt a bit wrong to pick an image that I didn't like, even if I thought the other one was worse. But by not skipping anything, it took maybe a couple of minutes to go from zero to 200 ranked image pairs. I saved profile codes at the same stages. And here are the results from the illustrated character prompt. I was really surprised to see how dark and monotone the results were after 40 rankings, and they didn't brighten up until around 150. And the results from the photographic prompt showed a similar pattern, darker and more monotone early on with slight brightening as I approached 200 rankings. If we look at the results from the diverse set of prompts, the no skip profile favored cooler colors and more monotone results compared to the warmer, grungier results from the default style. And here's how the no skip profile compares to the selective profile. The selective profile is a bit more contrasty and has richer colors. And while I do prefer both of these profiles over the default style, the no skip results kind of surprised me. So I created two more no skip profiles from scratch because I was curious if I would get similar results. And spoiler alert, the results were different from the first one. I have some thoughts on this that I'll share in a moment, but first let's look at all three no-skip profiles side by side at 150 rankings. 
For the illustrated character prompt, Profile 2 has more color diversity and is brighter, while Profile 3 really leans into red, white, and black tones. For the photographic prompt, Profiles 2 and 3 are noticeably brighter than Profile 1, and we get some peach and green tones back in a couple of the images. But let's look at how these three no-skip profiles handle the diverse prompt set. And I think this is interesting because when you look across each of these image grids, the differences are somewhat subtle. Some subjects like the humanoid and the dog stay pretty consistent across all three profiles, but then you've got this portrait in the lower right that looks totally different with each profile. So what does this mean? What do we do with all of this? There's a few points that I wanna make. First, when you start a new personalization profile, you're not given the same set of image pairs in the same order each time. So each profile you create will be different from the next and develop unique characteristics that are more evident with certain types of prompts. And I think this explains some of the nuance that can be seen when comparing across the three no-skip profiles. Now, one thing I haven't tested is taking the profiles out to say a couple of thousand image rankings to see if they start converging and look more similar to each other. That would be interesting to try. Second, I don't think you need to skip image pairs. In my opinion, it's not worth the hassle. Not skipping image pairs certainly feels a little weird, so I understand if there's still some resistance there, but just because you pick one image over the other does not mean that you're telling Midjourney that you like that image. This is where the trust the math thing comes in. When you pick an image, you're nudging Midjourney in a multitude of different directions that are much more nuanced than we realize. So instead of cherry picking image pairs, I think it's probably best to just follow Midjourney's advice, rank everything, and only skip when you very strongly dislike either image. And I do think it's worth ranking at least 100 or so image pairs versus stopping at the minimum of 40. Third, no personalization profile is perfect. I think it's better to think of each personalization profile as a snapshot or different shade of your overall preferred aesthetics. While each of these four personalization profiles capture different facets of my aesthetic preferences, they all capture something that I like much better than the default Midjourney style. And lastly, while the process for building a personalization profile isn't perfect, I think it's pretty good. They are super quick to set up if you don't skip a lot, and if you don't like the results, you can just try again with a new profile. If you want to blend multiple personalization profiles together, you can do that too. Just paste your codes after the profile parameter like this. Well, I hope you enjoyed this experimental take on personalization profiles. My take on this is obviously based on my ranking and results from a small set of prompts, but if you've tried something similar, let me know down in the comments. And I do have one last tip for you. If you're tired of hunting down your profile codes, you can give them aliases to use as shortcuts in your prompts. I'll link a video on how to do that down below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider liking, subscribing, and maybe even joining my Patreon community where I share monthly prompt collections and mid-journey guides. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.